To follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link on screen now, in the description below, or by going to clubcrochet.com slash chicken. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a chicken burb. That's right, I said burb with two Bs. That's because these guys have a lot of special qualities about them. Here you can see my little collection that I've been growing of different kinds of burbs. Um, if you want to find all these patterns, you can find them by just going to clubcrochet.com slash burb. I also have kits available for a vast majority of these. Um, this is actually this month's Club Crochet Pro Kit. But these guys are special for a few reasons. First off, um, they're not exactly what they seem. They all look like specific kinds of burbs. Um, here we have a little pigeon and there's a barn owl. I think he might be my favorite. We got a cardinal and a duck, a hummingbird, and a an eagle. But they're not really that. You see, they're actually birds in disguise. Boop! <laughs> It always makes me laugh. Um, they are little secret burbs disguised as other kinds of birds. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you not only how to crochet our little chicken as a burb, but also how to make it with a few other things um, we're going to be learning. Oh, that's a one without its head. This one is actually its head is attached. So we will learn how to make it with its head attached and detached. Um, I'll also be showing you how to make it so that it can actually spit out eggs. Um, which I think is pretty cool. This is just done with a finger puppet method, um, which I'll be explaining later in this video. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of other things you can do with these. Um, I like putting magnets in the rear end, uh, which lets them uh, attach to anything metal so they can actually be, be perching on whatever you want them to, um, which is included in the kits. Uh, there are these little magnets that are really, really strong. They're actually like crazy hard to get apart. Um, and great for attaching to anything metal. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. Let's put these guys to the side and I'll talk about what you'll need for this pattern. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton uh, and you'll need the following colors. I'm using beige for the top of our chicken, white for our uh, the main body and the burb body here. You'll need yellow for the beak and the feet and red for the waddle, that's what this guy's called, and the comb, which is this guy on the top here. You'll also need a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. That's my favorite hook when I'm using worsted weight cotton yarn. And you'll need, of course, a pair of scissors. Optionally, you can have these little magnets. Like I said, they help them attach to anything metal. Uh, I prefer magnets personally. Um, in my burbs because it just makes a lot a lot of fun and fun to actually use these guys uh, You'll also need some safety bead eyes I'm using the six millimeter safety bead eyes if you're making the burb version with the uh, little burb under a mask of a bird You'll need four safety bead eyes, um, but if you want to just make the chicken version, you'll obviously just need the two uh, what else? Oh, you'll need a darning needle. That is pretty important. Um, my favorite kind of darning needle is one with a little crimped end like this, with a little end like that. Uh, it helps me get in and out of hard to reach stitches. And uh, I think that's it. Um, if you want to have it where you can actually spit out a little egg, you'll obviously need a little plastic egg. Um, this one's wooden, actually. Uh, I tried doing a crocheted egg, but it's really hard. It kind of sticks to the inside, so it doesn't really pop out like that. Um, but yeah, there's other, other options you could do. Maybe a marble would work as well. I, I find little dice, little tiny dice work really well for this as well. Okay. Well, that's enough out of me. Without further ado, let's get hooking. We're actually going to start by crocheting the wings. See the wings and the tail are actually different in this pattern, which is not the case for my pigeon pattern where the wings and the tail are the same pattern. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to be making the wings first. We will be making two of these. For the wings, we'll be using our white yarn, and we're going to start with a magic loop. If you're not used to the magic loop, this is my favorite way to do it. I hold it down uh, with my middle and thumb, like that, facing downwards. And then I go over my index and middle finger, like so. And then I go back over my fingers and make an X, like that. I go back around the back side of my fingers and grab it with my ring and pinky finger. So it kind of looks like this. Now when I turn it to the other side, you'll see I just have two little bars here. 
And what I want to do is I want to take my crochet hook and go under this first bar and over the second and pull that second one under the first one. Then I'll kind of loop it around to make a kind of loop right there, kind of hold it in place. And then yarn over with the end I just pulled through by going over the bit right here. Sometimes I like using my index finger to kind of guide it over my crochet hook. And then I'll pull that through the loop I made, which will create a chain like that. Kind of a scoop in helps you get through there. And then once you have that pulled through, you can pull it off of your fingers. It should be locked into place. I'm going to pull this slightly tighter so it's a little bit smaller. And our first round of stitches is actually going to be working into this magic loop. And then we're going to pull this tight to make it really tight. Now for the magic, uh, for the wings, you're going to be making that ma little magic loop and working all of our stitches into this magic loop. Now for the wings, we have a very specific uh, stitches to go in order, and I'll be explaining all the stitches one by one. So I'm going to go kind of slow here because, uh, yeah, it's just a better idea to go slow. All right, so we're going to start by doing a single crochet. So we're going to go into the center of our hole right here, go around the back, and grab onto this back end of this yarn. We're going to pull it under the loop, and then yarn over again and pull through the two loops on the hook. Again, kind of a scooping method is easiest for me. And that's gonna be our first stitch. It's gonna be a single crochet. Then we're going to do a half double crochet into this magic loop. So for a half double crochet, I'm gonna yarn over, then go back into the hole, yarn over with another end and pull that under the hole, and then yarn over again and pull through all three of these loops on the hook like that. Again, that scooping method really helps out. Okay, so we got a single crochet and a half double crochet. Next, we want to do a double crochet, which is a little bit taller than the half double here. For that, we're going to yarn over again, go into that hole one more time, yarn over again, and pull that under, just like how we did our half double crochet, but now is where we're going to uh, change it up a little bit. We're going to yarn over again, and go through two loops. Instead of all three, like the half double crochet, we're just gonna go through these first two. So we pull just through the first two right there and leave that last one on it. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through these last two to make a double crochet. So it's just a little bit taller than the half double crochet. So you can see how we're kind of growing in size for our stitches. Okay, so that's the first part. Next up, we're going to chain one. So yarn over and pull through the loop for a chain. And then we're going to slip stitch into the magic loop. So we're going to go into the magic loop, yarn over, pull that under, and pull that same loop through the one on the hook like that. Okay. It's going to pull it straight down. Okay. So that's the first part of our wing. Now we're going to uh, chain two. So we're going to yarn over and chain one. Yarn over again and chain two. Then we're going to do another double crochet into the magic loop. So for that, we're going to yarn over, go into the magic loop, yarn over again and pull that under, yarn over a third time, pull that through two loops on the hook, and then yarn over a final time and pull through the two loops on the hook. That'll be another double crochet. That's again, that's the same as the last stitch in our first part here. Then we're going to chain one yarn over and chain one go into the magic loop and do another slip stitch into a loop and a slip stitch just like that there we go then we're going to chain two and we're basically going to do the first part backwards so instead of doing a single crochet half double crochet double crochet we're going to do double half single so we're going to yarn over Go into the loop and do a double crochet. We just did one of those, so let's do it a little quicker. Yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over again, and pull through two. So that's our double. Then we're going to do a half, half double that is. We're going to yarn over, go into the loop, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over again and pull through all three of those loops for a half double crochet. And finally, we're going to do another single crochet into the magic loop. So yarn over, pull through, Yarn over again and pull through two. Okay, and that's how you're gonna make the wings. Now all you have to do is pull this loop and it should pull all of our stitches nice and tight 
like that. See how it kind of makes a little W? That's going to be our little wing there. And we're going to make two of these. To finish up the wing, we're going to just cut the yarn. You don't need too long of an end. That's probably just about fine. And we're just going to pull it all the way through. You don't need to do a chain or anything. Just pull it all the way through like that. We're going to use these two ends to sew it onto our body when we get there. So I'm going to go ahead and make a second one of these wings, and then I'll come back and we'll do the tail. Okay, so for our next part, we're going to be making our tail. And our tail's made almost the exact same way, but we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So instead of uh, stopping at double crochet, we're going to go even larger and go to a triple crochet, which I'll show you in just a second. So we're going to start the exact same way with our magic loop. I'm going to go over these two fingers, make a little X, and then over the back. Grab it with our back two fingers. On the other side, we're going to yarn, go under the first, over the second, make a loop. Yarn over with the same end and pull that through the loop to make a chain. Then we can pull it off of our fingers. I'll pull this just a little bit tighter. That's probably just fine. Okay, so for the tail, we are going to be working all of these stitches into the magic loop. Again, this is almost the exact same way as the wings, but a little bit bigger. So we'll just go one stitch at a time. So we're going to start the same way with a single crochet into the magic loop. Then a half double crochet into the magic loop. Then a double crochet, so we're going to yarn over, go in, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. So, so far we're exactly the same as the first part, our, our wings. Now we're going to do a triple crochet, so we're going to yarn over twice, so one, and two. Okay, so there should be three loops on the hook like that. Then we're going to go into the magic loop, pull one through, yarn over again, and pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over again, and pull through another two loops on the hook. And finally, yarn over and pull through the last two loops on the hook. We'll be doing that stitch again in just a second. So now we have single, half, double, triple. Now we want to, uh, it's also called treble crochet in UK, so if, you, if you're more used to that. Now we're going to chain two, one and two. And we're going to slip stitch into uh, our magic loop go down and now we're going to chain three so one two and three and we're going to do another triple crochet into the the magic loop so we're going to yarn over twice one two into the magic loop yarn over and pull it through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through another two and yarn over and pull through the final two now we're going to chain two again, one and two, and do another slip, sti slip stitch into the magic loop. So we're making our little, our center of the, of the tail. And for our last part, just like the wings, we're going to do our first part backwards. So we want to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to do a treble crochet or a triple crochet, a double crochet, a half double crochet, and a single crochet in that order. So we're going to start with our triple crochet. So yarn over twice into the loop, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two, then yarn over, pull through another two, and then finally yarn over and pull through the final two for a triple crochet. Then a double crochet, yarn over into the magic loop, pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Now our half double crochet, yarn over into the loop. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then finally a single crochet into the same place. Just like that. Okay, and that's going to be our tail. We can just pull this end tight, just like how we did on the wing. Try, be, be careful not to accidentally break your yarn and you'll have to do this all over again. But you can see we have a, another W. And if I put it up next to our wing, you'll see that it is significantly bigger because our, our chicken tail is going to be a little bit bigger than the wings. Okay. And now to finish up, we can just cut up, cut the yarn. Same thing. Leave a little bit of an end, but not too much. And just pull it all the way through. Whoop. There we go. Okay. 
And that's going to be the end of uh, our tail. So we have our two wings and our one tail. Next up, we want to make our waddle. The waddle is going to be the little thing at the bottom of the, the beak of our chicken here, the little kind of like chin thing. Okay, so we're gonna need our red yarn for that. You don't need very much. Like that. And we're gonna start the exact same way with a magic loop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make our magic loop really quick since I've shown you how to do it twice now. Okay, and pull this a little bit tighter. All right, so now working into the magic loop, this is the waddle. We're going to single crochet one. It's pretty easy. Then we're going to slip stitch one into the center, like that. Then we're going to chain one and single crochet another one into the magic loop. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now we can just pull this tight and cut our yarn and pull it tight. And again, to reiterate, that was make a magic loop, cut the yarn, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, make a magic loop, single crochet one, slip stitch one, chain one, single crochet one, and then cut and pull through. And that's it, that's all you need. Just this little, just this little fella here, that's just gonna go under the chin. Now next up, we're going to be making the comb, which is the thing that goes along the top of our chicken right here. So for the comb, we're gonna be using our red yarn again. We don't need to do our magic loop this time. Instead, we can just make a slip knot. So for a slip knot, we're going to make a loop like that. Flip the loop over on our longer end right here and pull that end through and that should make a little slip knot. Now when you put your crochet hook in here and you pull this end, it should tighten around the crochet hook like that. Okay, so that's how we're going to be making a slip knot. Now for our comb, we're going to chain three. So we're just gonna yarn over, pull through one, two, and three. And for our comb, it's pretty easy. It's just like this repetitive kind of thing. We're just gonna do it three times. But you wanna work into the back loops of the chains if you can. So the back loops of the chains, let me get our little, our little uh, needle here. For the back loops of the chains, this would be the top loop. This one down here would be the bottom loop. And if you turn it around, you'll see this kind of like spine right there. See the spine? Let's get a little closer. We're gonna work into this. Just the spine loop. I call this the back loop of your chains. Okay, let's go to crochet hook back in there. And into the back loop of the first chain that you made, you're gonna skip two of these chains. We're gonna skip one, two. Into the back loop of the first one, we're going to yarn over and do a half double crochet into that last one right there. Okay, so get your crochet hook in there, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. Okay, that'll make a half double crochet. And now we want to basically do that again and again. We're going to chain three, one, two, and three, and half double crochet into the first chain that you made. So we're gonna yarn over, skip two chains, and half double crochet into the back loop of the first one that you made right here. Pull through, yarn over, and pull through three. Okay, now one more of those, we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and half double crochet into that first chain you made. So we're gonna yarn over, skip two of our chains, one, two, work into this back loop. You can see the bump there. Sometimes you need your needle or nail to kind of get in there. Then yarn over and pull through, and yarn over again and pull through all three of those loops like that. Okay, now to finish this up, all you need to do is chain one, like that, cut the yarn. You do want a little bit longer of an end, so like let's go like that much and just pull it all the way through. Okay, and we're just gonna sew this onto the top of our um, the head of our chicken. So we can just put that to the side. And next up, we're going to be making the feet. The feet are really not too bad also. So we're just gonna get our yellow yarn here 
and we're going to start the same way as our comb. We're going to start with a slip knot. So we're going to go over, uh, make a loop, flip that over itself, and pull the inside loop through like that. And I like to pinch the little tail end to kind of hold it in place. Put that on a crochet hook and pull it a little tighter. And for our feet, we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And we're going to pull this tight. So we want to pull it real tight, which will collapse the the last two chains in on itself and make kind of a little point. So you can kind of see it making a point right there. Now we're going to slip stitch into the back loop of the first chain that you made. Okay, so if you find this little first one right here, I'm just going to go into the back loop of that. This one, you probably will need your nail. Make sure it's under all of those little threads. And we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to yarn over and just pull that through and yarn over and keep pulling it through the end like that. Okay. So you see we got a little point now. Now you want to chain two, one, and two. Pull tight. See, it kind of makes it into a point. And we're going to slip stitch into that same spot that we slip stitch into before. So you can kind of see that the hole's a little opened right there. So we're just going to get into that hole. Yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again to make our point. And we're going to do one more of those. Chain two, one, and two. Pull tight, and slip stitch into that same loop one more time. There we go. And now you should have three little points. See, so it, it looks a little messy, so we're gonna we're gonna fix that up in just a second. And we want to cut our yarn like that, and chain one, and then pull that through like so. We're gonna use these two ends to sew it onto our body. Now, before I keep going, I do want to pinch each of these little points here, and that kind of keeps it into the shape that we want it to, which is a kind of like the top of a star. There you go. We're going to use these two ends to sew it into the body. Now, this was the part that was facing us when we were making it, but when we sew it onto the body, we're actually going to sew it on so that this is on top because it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay. All right. So you want to make two of these little feet, and I'm going to go ahead and make our second one, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and the final thing that we want to make before we start working on our head is the burb beak. Now, you don't have to make this if you are making the head attached, but basically, let me get a burb right here. We're going to be making this little tiny beak that's sewn onto the body of our burb if you're making it. Again, if you're making the head attached, this part's irrelevant. You don't need it, so go ahead and skip it. But I am going to be making a burb because I love them as burbs. <laughs> so we're going to start the same way with a slip knot. Same exact way as we made our feet. And the burp beak's nice and easy. All you have to do is chain three, one, two, and three, and work into the back loop of the first chain that you made, third chain from the hook currently. So we're gonna skip two, one, two. We're gonna half double crochet into the back loop of that first chain. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that back loop, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook like that. There we go. That's it. That's all you need to do. To finish up, we'll just chain one, cut the yarn. You don't need very much of an end. That's probably just fine. And just pull that all the way through like that. Okay, now we have a little burp beak. Little burp beak. Okay, now we can finally start working on the head. For the head, we'll be using our beige yarn. And we're going to start with a magic loop. So we're going to... I'll just go ahead and make one really quick. Make an X, go into the first loop, go into the back loop, there we go. And it's magic, ba -ba. isn't it beautiful? <laughs> All right, so for our, uh, for our head of our burp, we're going to start by single crocheting six times into the center of our magic loop. So we're just gonna go into the magic loop, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over and pull through two. Just a single crochet. We're going to do six of those. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We can go ahead and pull the magic loop nice and tight now, just like that. 
Now for our next round, we're going to be working around this tail end just for a few stitches to keep it into place, but it's pretty easy. We're going to be working into the single crochets that we made. We're going to start with the first single crochet we made. If you want to count back six stitches, that's the, probably the um, most uh, precise way to find it. So we're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to make sure your crochet hooks under both of those loops like that. Okay, it can be kind of hard. You got to kind of wiggle into that first one sometimes. And into each one of these stitches in round one, for round two, we're going to be doing an increase into each one of these stitches. So that's six increases total. An increase is just two single crochets into the exact same spot. So we're just going to do a single crochet into this spot right now. Don't forget to work around this tail end. We're going to yarn over. Don't yarn over with the tail end. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball. Pull that under. Then yarn over and pull through two to make our first single crochet. And you see how we worked around this tail end. Now we're going to do another single crochet into the exact same spot. Now the, be the best way to find that spot is if you follow this little V here, it'll point directly to the hole that we need to go into. So we're going to go into that same hole, yarn over and pull through with the end attached to the yarn, yarn over again and pull through two loops on the hook. Okay, so there's our second single crochet and our first increase made. We want to do six of those increases total. So we're just going to pull this tail end to the side. Once you got it through those first ones, you don't really need to crochet around it anymore. So we can just keep it to the side. And we'll just do an increase into each one of these stitches. So there's our first increase. Here's our second increase. One. And into the same stitch. Two. Okay, there's two increases. There's four stitches total. With six increases, you're going to be increasing up from six stitches in round one to 12 stitches in round two. So by the end of round two here, we should have 12 stitches around. There's our third increase in our sixth stitch. Here's our fourth increase, one and two. Fifth increase, single crochet one, single crochet two. That's gonna be our 10th stitch. And for our final two stitches, our final increase, we're just gonna work into this last stitch right here. There's one and two. Now just to keep it pretty, uh, you know, easy to notice, I'm going to be crocheting around this red yarn just as a stitch marker. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut our tail end a little shorter so it's just not in, in our way, like that short, just fine. We're gonna take our red yarn, I'm just gonna hold it with my thumb and just gonna hold it in front of our stitch like that. So that way when we crochet our first stitch, We'll work around that end and it'll mark where the end of our round is so we know when to when we're finished with a round okay so we're on round three now for round three we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase and we're going to repeat that process three times total okay so what does that mean that means that our first three stitches are a single crochet easy enough we're going to work into the same places just like we were doing in our last round so here's our first stitch here we're going to single crochet one into our first stitch Keep this red yarn to the side for a sec. Okay, so there's one single crochet. And into the next stitch, we'll do another single crochet. Into the third stitch right here, we'll do another single crochet. So there's three single crochets. And then into our fourth stitch right here, we want to do an increase. So two single crochets into the same stitch, into that fourth stitch. So we're gonna go into that stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two for our first single crochet, and then do another single crochet into that same spot. Boom. And that's going to make an increase. Now, the way you can tell the difference between a single crochet and an increase is pretty obvious in this round. So it's a great time to really look at it if you're new to crocheting. This is a very uh, important technique so that you can crochet without a stitch marker. And it just makes your life a lot easier if you can tell the difference between a single crochet and an increase. Um, and it will come over, uh, it'll be easier and easier over time. But let me just go through it now just so that you're aware. A single crochet looks like one V right here into one spot. Okay, so there's just one V, boop, boop, boop. An increase looks like two Vs, boop, 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 into one spot. So this is a single crochet and this is an increase. You can kind of see the difference there. Okay. So that was our first repeat. 
um, three single crochets and then an increase. And we want to do three of those repeats total. So let's do our second repeat, three single crochets and then an increase. So there's one, two, three, and then another increase right here, four and five. Okay, so there's our second repeat. And now our third repeat here, let's do it one more time, three single crochets and then an increase. And this is gonna bring you up in stitches. You're gonna go from 12 stitches around to 15 stitches around. So by the end of this round, you should have 15 stitches. Here's our final stitch right here, which is an increase. And we can pull this red end over just like that, which will mark the end of our round. Now in the next round, we're just gonna work around this red end to keep it in place and it will uh, keep us knowing where the end of our round is for each round. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round three. You should have 15 stitches around now. For round four, nice and easy, we're just gonna be doing a single crochet into each stitch all the way around till we get to the end. There should be 15 stitches around. So I'm just gonna go into each stitch and just do one single crochet. Try not to make sure to accidentally put two stitches into the same spot or to accidentally skip a stitch. If you need to, by the end of this round, I would suggest uh, counting back your stitches and making sure that you have exactly 15 stitches around. Now for the next round, we are going to be doing some fancy color changes. So make sure to um, be prepared at the end of this round because the next round is probably the most difficult round in the entire piece. Okay, so we're at our final stitch right here. Now before I continue, I am gonna go ahead and cut the ends of this red yarn on the inside, just because I like where it is right now to show the end of our round and we can follow that up our piece, but I don't want it to get in the way as we're doing our next and probably most difficult round in this entire piece. So for our last stitch right here, we're going to start our single crochet, but we're not gonna pull through with our beige yarn just yet. Instead, we want to get our white yarn prepared because we're going to be doing our bobble stitch eyes. So this is a technique that I use to make our, our eyes look all kind of googly like this. You don't have to do this. Um, you can make it so that uh, your eyes are kind of um, like, like this without the bobble stitches. Uh, but I like to use the bobble stitch eyes per personally. I think they look really goofy and fun. Um, but they can be a little bit difficult. So please bear with me. We're going to be doing a stitch here called a mini bobble stitch, and we're going to be doing it in white. Okay, now like I said, this can be pretty difficult, so we're going to go one step at a time. All right. So first we're going to pull through with our beige yarn around our white yarn to keep it into place, like that. Okay. Now we're going to be using our white yarn for this next stitch, which is going to be a mini bobble stitch. To do that, we're going to grab our white yarn. And we're going to yarn over with our white yarn. Now I'm holding it down with my index finger of my dominant hand. I'm holding this tail end down just to make sure. I want to keep it really tight. You want to keep this stitch nice and uniform and tight. And don't be loose with it. So we're going to loop over like that and we're going to go into the next stitch. I'm gonna work around our beige yarn for this stitch um, just to keep it into place. It's not really super duper necessary, but I, you still should do it. So we're gonna yarn over our white yarn. We're gonna go into our next stitch right here, yarn over with our white yarn and pull through the stitch like that. Now we're gonna yarn over again and pull through two loops on the hook, kind of like you're making a double crochet. Now we're gonna repeat that process three times total. So we want two more of this exact repeat. Okay, so let's do our second repeat. We're gonna yarn over again, go into the exact same stitch. Make sure you're going into the same stitch. That's really important. You don't wanna go into different stitches here. You wanna go into that same stitch like that. Yarn over again and pull through. Yarn over again and pull through two loops on the hook. Okay, so there's our second repeat. Now let's do one more of those repeats. We're gonna yarn over, go into that same stitch, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over again and pull through two loops. There we go, and that's gonna be our mini bobble stitch. Now to finish this mini bobble stitch up, 
what we want to do is we want to switch back over to this beige yarn. So what I do is I take my index finger, go under our white yarn, and we're going to kind of flip it over so that the beige yarn goes under it but is over it now. So it's like that. We're going to yarn over with our beige yarn and pull that through all of the loops on the hook. There we go. And I like to pull our little ends here a little tighter. And that's going to make a mini bobble stitch and we're going to put an eye into that mini bobble stitch in a little bit. Okay, so for our next stitch, we want to work into the next stitch. So here you can see all these stitches are worked into that one stitch. Now we want to work into the next one right here. And we just want to do a single crochet. So we're going to go into that next stitch. And I'm going to work around this white yarn. I'm going to pull that through. But we also want to grab some more yellow yarn because we want to make the beak. So you don't need much yellow yarn, but we're going to go ahead and put that in between, just like that. And we're going to pull through with our beige yarn, working around our yellow yarn and our white yarn. We're just going to pull through like that. Okay. Pull that tight. And again, I'm holding down the yellow yarn with my index finger of my dominant hand. So just holding it down, holding it all, all down. Now with the white yarn, I'm just going to pull it to the side like that and, and hold it down with everything else. We're going to come back to it in a sec, but we don't need to cut it. We can just hold it off to the side and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so for our next part, we're going to be doing something called a spiked bobble, which is basically just like that mini bobble that we made for the eye, but we do a little point in the middle to make it into a beak. So to do that, the first two steps are exactly the same. You want to yarn over the yellow yarn, make sure we got it in place on the inside here. So we're going to get a little bit extra there. Yarn over the yellow yarn. We're going to go into our next stitch right here. Yarn over again with the yellow and pull through. Yarn over again and pull through two. Okay, so there's our first, uh, first part. Now we want to do that again. Let's repeat that one more time. We're going to yarn over the yellow yarn, go into the same exact stitch, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so there's step two. Now is where we do a little variation, and this part is really can be really tough. So take it slow um, and be very patient. So what you're going to do is with everything held tight, look at my right hand. I'm holding everything like in place. What we're going to do is we're going to chain two, yarn over, pull through one loop, just one, like that. Then we're going to yarn over and chain another one, pulling just through one loop, like that. Now what you want to do is you have two chains here. You can see I'm kind of making that little V there. What you want to do is you want to kind of flip that chain over and see that little bar on the back right there? We want to slip stitch into the back loop only of the first chain that we made. So we're going to skip that first chain. Here's the second chain from the hook by the first chain that we made. And there's that back loop. Now here's definitely where I suggest using your nail. You want to kind of like pry it over the crochet hook and get into that back loop. There you go. Make sure you're under all the threads of that loop. Then we're going to yarn over and slip stitch one. So we're going to pull through that loop and pull through only our first loop right there. Just our first one. See, it, it wants to go under both of them, but make sure it doesn't. There you go. And that makes a little point. And to finish up this mini bobble, we want to do one more repeat of that first step one more time into the same stitch. So we're going to yarn over again, go into that same exact uh, stitch right here, yarn over with our yellow yarn and pull through, then yarn over again with our yellow yarn and pull through two loops on the hook, one and two, and that's our spiked bobble. Now to finish this up, we want to yarn over with our beige yarn. You should have four loops on the hook, we're going to yarn over with our beige yarn, so I'm going to flip it under just like how we did with our mini bobble. Flip it under just like that. Yarn over the beige yarn and pull through all loops on the hook. Okay, just like that. See how I really did a scoop there? That makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now we have our eyeball and our, our, our first eyeball and our um, beak. Now we can pull this end a little tighter. Let's go ahead and pull our yellow end right here. Just a little bit tighter, like that. There we go. And now we want to grab our white yarn. Remember how we held our white yarn over like that? We want to pull it back over, and we're going to single crochet into our next stitch using our beige yarn, 
but we're going to work around the yellow yarn here and around our white yarn here. So we're going to go into our next stitch right there, yarn over with our beige yarn, pull through, and then pull through two with our beige yarn. And now we can pull all of our little ends a little tighter, kind of tweak everything, make sure it's in the right position. And we can pull this yellow yarn over to the side. We don't need it anymore. That was actually the last of our yellow yarn. So we can cut the end like that, toss it to the side. We can use it to stuff our character in a little bit, maybe. Okay, so our final bit here is we wanna do one more mini bobble in white into the next stitch. So again, we did a mini bobble in white, a single crochet, our spiked bobble in yellow, another single crochet, and then now we want our last mini bobble in white. So what we need to do is we're going to yarn over with our white yarn and go into the next stitch right here, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over again and pull through two loops on the hook and repeat that three times in a row. So there's our first time, let's repeat for the second, yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And then for our third one, yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so there's our mini bobble made. And to finish it up, we're gonna switch over to our beige yarn, yarn over the beige, and pull through all the loops on the hook, like that. And we wanna pull the white yarn a little bit tighter there. Okay, now into the rest of the stitches in this round, we just want a single crochet in beige. So we want a single crochet into the next stitch right here, Make sure to go around your white yarn for your first stitch, just for the first one, like that. And I like to pull my stitch nice and tight to make sure everything's in place. Okay, so now we got our face basically made. We'll need to sew on the body parts and stuff, but that, that was the hardest part of this entire round. Now before I continue, I'm just gonna cut our white yarn, throw that to the side. And we're going to finish this round by just single crocheting till we get to the end of the round. There should be 10 more single crochets total. So there's, there's one, two, three, four. We're just gonna go to, the, to our little red yarn. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and here's 10. Okay, so now you can see our little red stitch marker. If you follow it up, you see we're at the end of our round there. Let's go ahead and tweak that beak just a little bit. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round five. Again, that was the most difficult round of this whole piece. So if you've made it this far, you're good to go. You got it. You totally got it from here. <laughs> okay, so for our next two rounds, rounds six, or our next three rounds, rounds six, seven, and eight, that's three rounds in a row, we just want a single crochet into each stitch around. Now, when you get to these mini bobble stitches and the beak stitch, you can find what stitch to work into by looking at the top of it. You'll see these little beige Vs, see right there? You wanna work under all the beige stitches. So we're gonna go into our next stitch like that, go under, make sure you're under both of those beige loops, and we're just gonna single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And you see, I kind of point down, like down into our piece to make sure I get under the beige loops only. Oh, see, I accidentally pulled some of that yellow yarn through. So let's go ahead and fix that one, like that. There we go. We'll just keep single crocheting around. There should be 15 stitches still at the end of each one of these rounds. So that's a great way to make sure that you're on track is just make sure that you have 15 stitches per round. Okay, we're coming to the end of round six. And hey, if you like this video, please give it a like down below. Um, it helps this channel grow. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah. So there's our first end, uh, first single round of single crochets. We want three total, so let's do our second round here. Just keep going around. And if you really like this um, video and you like this pattern a lot, make sure to check out more of my burbs at clubcrochet.com slash burbs. And also make sure to uh, check out a membership on the website. 
Memberships on my Club Crochet website gets you access to all of the patterns on my site. Every pattern that I've made, every single one comes with a video tutorial just like this. Comes with a PDF tutorial, written instructions. Um, there's an interactive check marks to make sure that you are on the right track so you don't miss a stitch. So there's the end of our second of our three rounds of single crochets. Now I'm doing our third round of single crochets. Memberships also get you um, kits mailed directly to your door with all the materials you need to make whatever we're making that month because I add a new pattern every single month to that library that you get access to with a membership. So if you have a pro membership, you get a kit. So this month's kit, you got to choose between a bunch of different of those burps. You could choose between a duck, a chicken, an owl, a pigeon, a turkey. And then I send a kit with all the materials that we're using in this video. The exact same materials that I'm using, including the uh, super strong magnets that we'll need. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this round. If you want to learn more about a membership, go to clubcrochet.com and uh, you can learn more right there. Okay, so we're at the end of our last round of single crochets. Um, that was the end of round eight. Now, for round nine, it's pretty easy. We're going to be doing um, a frill at the very bottom of our piece here to kind of uh, separate the body from the head a little bit more. Um, kind of look like little feathers. To do that, all you need to do is you need to use our beige yarn in chain one, like that. And then work into the front loop only of the next stitch. We want to slip stitch one. So only in the front loop. We don't want to go under both of them like that. See how two loops are over that crochet hook? No, we just want to go under that one. So we chain one, then we go under that front loop only, and we yarn over and pull through, and then keep that loop and pull through the loop on the hook to make a slip stitch. Okay, we're going to do that for each one of these stitches all the way till we get to the end. So let's do another one right now. We're going to chain one, boop, then go into the next stitch. You can tell this is our previous stitch because it's kind of getting pulled open. So you can see that hole there. So go into the front loop of our next one right here. Might need your nail to really make sure you're only in that front loop. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through for a slip stitch. Okay, chain one. Next front loop right here, pull through, pull through. Chain one, front loop, pull through, pull through. And that's it. You just need to do that till you get to the end of the round. And this is going to be the end of our head. And this is your chance where you could either turn it into a burb with your um with the head separate, like as a as a mask. Or you can turn it into just a chicken, simple chicken. And here is your chance to do that at the end of this round. I personally much rather have it as a burb because it can be a chicken when it wants to be a chicken. And I think it's so funny and so silly to take that head off at any time. There's chain one and slip stitch one. Chain one, slip stitch. Now we're at our last end right here. You can see that this is where we started. It kind of looks a little weird. This is the last single crochet. So to do that, we're just going to chain one. We're going to work into our final front loop right here and slip stitch one. There should have been eight or I mean 15 stitches that you worked into when you went around there. Okay, there are 15 slip stitches total. Now to finish this up, we're going to cut the yarn. Regardless of if you're making the head attached or separate, you still want to do this. We're going to cut the yarn like that we're going to pull it all the way through and we're going to hide this end to do that we're going to take our needle thread our beige tail on there and we're going to go into the back of our first chain that we made so this is our first chain right here we want to make sure you're under both of those loops like that and go through the top down we're going to pull that through like that, try not to pull it too tight. And see where this end is coming out? You wanna go right back into the center of where that end's coming out, right there. And just go into a few stitches. We're just gonna kinda of hide it into the backs of a few stitches, like that. And this is gonna mimic the end, so we can pull it. I'm going to pull it somewhat tight. Try not to pull it too tight. 
The idea here is it's supposed to mimic the end of the rest of our stitches, so you can't really tell where the end is. Okay. Now we can cut the yarn. You can cut it pretty close. I would say like that close is probably just about fine. We'll throw that end over to the side and use it for stuffing a little bit later. And I like to stretch the inside out there a little bit. And now we have the head um, basically done. Now we just need to add the face. And then I'll show you how to uh, continue on to make it into straight, go straight into the body or to uh, make the burp, burp body instead. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add the eyes. That's always the first thing you want to do. Um, I'm just going to pull this stitch marker out here because we don't really need it. Toss that to the side. Now the eyes you can make in a few different ways. Um, you can make the eyes pointing separate. You can make them pointing inside to make them cross-eyed. You can make them pointing up or down. Um, here is, this is an example of him looking down. It kind of makes it look a little cross-eyed. Uh, this is it looking separate ways, kind of. Well, it's kind of straight there. This is the part where you get to really customize your chicken to make it look different ways. So what I like to do is take my needle here and let's make this guy, let's make him looking, uh, let's try to make him looking really cross-eyed, straight in on, into the, to the beak. So what I'm going to do is on each side here, you'll see each one of these eyes have three separate sections. There's one, two, and three because of the three parts that it took to make it. We want to go in between the middle section and whatever way we want to point. So for our example, we want it to point in, inside. So we want it right here. We'll go into our piece like that. And you want to just kind of like get your, get your needle into a position that you want it to be in. And then twist it on the inside when you get to the eye of the needle. And it kind of creates a little gap in your stitch. You can see how, see how it just made a little bit of a gap. And that gives us the opportunity to stick our eye into there. So we're going to go right there into that gap. And get our eye in that. We're going to kind of try to make, force it to point in if we can. And we're going to do that to the other side as well. So here's our middle part. We want to go on the inside of our middle part to make it so that each of our eyes are pointing in. Like right there is probably just, just fine. See, if we got another eye right there, it might be just perfect. So we need to twist, twist, twist. Make sure it leaves a bit of a gap. Pull through. You can see our little gap there. See it? Take our second eye. We're going to go into that gap like that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so now you want to take our ends here. And we have these two little plastic ends, and this will lock our eyes into place. So you really want to make sure that your eyes are exactly where they you want them to be. And you want to take the end, point it inside like that, put it on the end there, and just kind of pop it on like that. All right, so there we got one eye attached. We'll take our other one pop it on that other eye right there. Hear that nice satisfying click, 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 click. Make sure it's really locked on there. And now is when you want to like kind of tweak the eyes a little bit, make sure everything's where you want them to be. I kind of want to get a little bit more white on the inside of this side of the eye. So I'm going to try to kind of use my needle and pull those stitches out from under a little bit. Okay. Let's push this eye in a little bit. That's pretty good. I like it. All right. So next up, we want to add our waddle on the bottom. So we're going to grab our little waddle here. And there should be two ends, one towards the middle and one towards the outside. What you want to do is you want to take the middle one first, thread that on a needle. And this one will go right directly into the center. Okay, so right directly into the center of the bottom of the beak. So right here, about like that. And then the other end, we want to go in through the right side of the beak and then come out through the other side of the beak like that. Thread that on a needle. Looks like he's got a cool piercing now. 
We're going to go under the beak. We're going to go around this side of the waddle. Okay, go, try to go under both of those loops of the, of the other side of the waddle right there. And just go right back in through the same spot, place that you came out. Like so. We'll pull it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay. Kind of tweak it. Make sure we like where it is. That's pretty good. And then we can just take these two ends, the two red ends on the inside. We just double knot them. And it will keep our waddle in place. One and two. Okay, and we're just going to cut the yarn close-ish, toss that to the side, and now we got our eyes, our waddle, our beak, and now all we need to do is add our comb on the top. So the comb is pretty easy. Again, just like our waddle, you should have two ends that you can use to sew it on. Um, our little tail end here, that should be a little bit shorter. There's our longer end. We're going to start with our longer end. Thread that on our needle. And we're going to go from the front to the back. What we want to do is we want to go so that our second part is right through the middle right there. So we want to do a stitch that's close to the middle. Let's go like right here. Then we want to come out through the middle. Like that. And we want to go around. See how there's three bumps? One, two, three. We want to go around the bottom of our second bump. Okay, so just a loop like right there. And then back through the center, like that. And you can just go straight through. Just pull it all the way through. We'll go ahead and pull that nice and tight. That should pull everything tight. And then the last thing is you want to take this other end and go through a stitch like perpendicular, so see how it's kind of going in a straight line, but close to the middle, so like right here. You're gonna take, thread that other end, pull that through the needle, and then pull that through the head. Like that. And there we have our little waddle on there. You can make it kind of flip over to the side, you flip it that way. And we just take these two ends and double knot it on the inside like this one just pull it all the way through just kind of tie it double knot it on the inside there we go and cut the end now like that pull that to the side there we go now we got our head all made up we got our little waddle here we got our our, our waddle here our comb here looks pretty good Okay, so now if you want to make your head separate, um, you are done with your head. You can put it to the side and start on the burb body. If you want to make your burb, uh, your head attached to the body, um, here is how you're going to do it. You're going to use your white yarn and make a slip knot like that. And what we're going to do is you see these back loops on the inside there? You want to find this last one right here. Find that last one and count back 15 stitches. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So this is going to be our first one right there. What you want to do is you want to get your crochet hook into that 15th one. Pull this slip knot through. Okay, so just pull it through that back loop and then chain one. Like that. Now into this round, into the um, to all these back loops, we're going to work our um, our round. Uh, let's see, round. I think it's round eight. Oh no, no, round six of the body. So if you continue on to uh, on this pattern and get to the burb body, on round six, that's where we're going to be working off of. Now round six of the body is. You single crochet four and then you increase one. But all of these stitches are going to be worked into these back loops only, starting with the same one that you just worked out of. So, for example, if we were on round six of the burb body, you'd go into the same stitch you just made our chain into and start with our first single crochet, like that, like that. And then you do two more single crochets. So, there's one, here's two. 
and here is three, and then you'd work an increase, and then you'd you'd continue on from there. And when you get back around, you'd start working into this into these same stitches that you worked into, as if this little end here wasn't there, and it will make it clean, and you won't even be able to tell where the body starts and where it ends. Okay, so that's how you would do it if you wanted the head attached to the body, but I don't really want that. I'm going to be doing the burr body separate, so I'm gonna pull that all out, put this guy to the side, and get it all ready, and we're gonna start on our burb body. Okay, so for our burb body, we are going to be starting the same way as we did our head. We wanna start with a magic loop. Get into back right there. I'll just go ahead and get it started. And of course, we're gonna be starting with our white yarn. And we are going to start our magic, our, our burb body by doing uh, just like we did that first one. Our first two rounds are exactly the same. You want to single crochet six times into the magic loop for round one. So we're just going to go into this magic loop. I'll go ahead and do it kind of quick since we've already done it once. Just six, six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We can pull that magic loop nice and tight. And for round two, just like our our head, we want to do an increase into each of the stitches that you just made. So you just want to go into that stitch right there. You want to do an increase into that stitch. You want to work around this tail end for just our first two stitches. There we go. So there's our first. We go one and two single crochets into the same spot. Again, this is exactly the same way. You're doing an increase into each stitch around, and there will be six single crochets in the first round and because you're doing an increase in each stitch around you should have 12 stitches by the end of round two so there's our first increase let's do our second one right here one and two that'll be our fourth stitch there's five and six worked in the same stitch seven and eight nine and 10, and then 11 and 12. Now, before I continue on to round three, uh, a couple things. First off, I wanna pull this end really tight to make that bottom, that hole really closed. And then I wanna thread this onto a needle, go through the very center like that, come out through the in, outside like that. And then you just wanna cut the end nice and close like that. And this will create a little tuft of, of, I guess, feathers on the top of your burb's head. So you can see what it, we're making right now. So just on the top right there. Okay. Now, for the next round, before I continue, I want to make grab a stitch marker. So I'm going to hold that down with my thumb, hold it over end right there. And we're just going to crochet around it for our next round. Now for our next two rounds, that's rounds three and four, two rounds total, we're going to be single crocheting into each stitch around. So just single crochets all the way around. And this, uh, you should have 12 stitches around. So you should have 12, just 12 single crochets all the way till we get to the end of the round. So this is a nice respite, just a nice little break of just regular old single crochets feels well deserved after making that crazy those crazy stitches on the face okay this will be the end of round three I'm gonna hold my stitch marker up like that and just keep doing our single crochets around should have 12 stitches see how it's coming together And we might keep the stitch marker going as we're going into this piece just to make it a little easier and more obvious where the ends of our rounds are. Okay. There we go. So that's going to be the end of round four. Now for round five, we are going to, um, well, yeah, I'll go ahead. we'll go ahead and pull that stitch marker up and just keep going around it. For round five, what you want to do is you want to single crochet three and then increase one. I like kind of like we did round three of the head here. Actually, exactly like we did round three of the head. So again, that's single crochet three. So we're going to go 
one, two, and three, and then we're gonna do an increase into the next. So there's four and five into the same stitch. So three single crochets and then an increase. And we're gonna repeat that process three times total. So we want two more repeats. Let's do our second repeat. Three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then another increase right here, four and five. One more time, three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then another increase right here. And that should bring you up from 12 stitches to 15. So you should have 15 stitches by the end of round five there. Okay, so now we're on to round six, and this is the round where you would continue on if you were making the head attached. So if you are, uh, if you skipped over to round six, hello, welcome back. Um, this is the, these are the stitches that you should be making for, uh, but working into the back loops of the head. Okay, so for round six, we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase. So, and we're gonna repeat that three times total. So we'll do four single crochets, and if, again, if you're making your head attached, just pretend you're working into the back loops instead of both loops the way I'm doing it. So we've got one, two, three, and four single crochets, and then an increase. I'm gonna go five and six. And we're gonna repeat that process of four single crochets and then an increase three times total. So let's do our second repeat. Four single crochets, and this should bring you up from 15 stitches to 18 stitches. So by the end of round six here, we should have 15 or 18 stitches around. There's our second increase. You can see two Vs going into the same spot. Let's keep going around. One, two, three, and four, and then an increase. One and a two. Okay, should be 18 stitches now. I'm gonna pull a stitch marker up. That's gonna be the end of round six. For round seven, we're going to be doing 11 single crochets and then an increase. So let's do 11 single crochets. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, we got seven and eight, nine, ten, and here is eleven. And then we'll do an increase right here. Okay. And then we're going to do two more single crochets. One, two, and then another increase. Boom. Boom. Three and four. Okay, so there was 11 single, cro single crochets, an increase, two single crochets, an increase, and then finally two more single crochets and then another increase into the end here. So there's two more, one, two, and then our final increase right here. And that's gonna bring you up from uh, 18 stitches to 21 stitches. So we should have 21 by the end of round seven here. Okay, so for round eight, uh, nice and easy. We're just going to go ahead and single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around. Nice and easy. This is a great time for you to count stitches. Make sure that you have, you're on the right count and you should have 21 stitches around. I'm just going to keep going around into each stitch all the way around. And after this, we're going to go ahead and make our burb head, which is relatively easily, easy, <laughs> easily. Okay. And we're really cruising now. The, the rest of this pattern is, is mostly just sewing things together, which isn't too tough. Okay. That's going to be the end of round eight, or all of our single crochets all the way around. Now we want to add our face. 
or burb face at least. And you can skip this if you are not making the burb and you are making the head attached. You don't really need to continue right here. Okay, we wanna start with our beak. So here's our little beak here. And this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom of the beak. So we wanna make sure it's sewn on like that. And we're going to sew on our first end. So we're gonna go ahead and thread it onto our needle. And I have a very specific place I like to put our beak. So we wanna do, I'm gonna hold my guy upside down and we're gonna find our uh, first increase in round, um, in round five. Okay, so here's our first increase in round five. Um, so if we count from the end of our round, uh, here we're on round one, two, three, and four. So we're at the top of our round four in between round four and five. And we wanna count over one, two, three, four stitches away. And that's gonna be the center of our beak. So what we wanna do is we wanna sew it on so that our beak is like that, perfectly centered. So we wanna put one half here, and or one, one of the ends here and one of the ends here. We're gonna start on this end right here. So again, that's, uh, if you count from the end of our round, we got one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna pull through with one end. And then three right here, we'll take the other end, thread that on a needle and pull that through our stitch right there. And you wanna make sure to pull this beak just tight enough so that the knot, see how the knot just barely pokes on through there? That is definitely the goal. You wanna get just that, just that knot, barely, ah, barely, there we go, poking through like that. And then we could just double knot this on the inside. There's one, and two for a double knot and cut our end nice and close like that throw that to the side okay and then next we want to add our eyes so you want to get some of our little safety eyes here just go ahead and grab those i can they kind of disappeared under my light box okay so you want to take your little safety eyes and you want to put it one stitch away from both ends of our beak so if that's the end of our beak, we want one stitch away right here. And you want it on the same round, so just like that. There's one, and then our other one's gonna go one stitch away right here. There's two, just like that. And we can just go ahead and lock that end in. Okay. All right, so now we have our eyes and our beak made and we can continue on in our round. Okay, so now we are on, let's go ahead and pull this nice and tight. We'll get our stitch marker up. And we're on round uh, uh, nine, we're on round nine. And for round nine, we're going to single crochet 11 and then do an invisible decrease, which I'll show you in just a second. So first we're going to single crochet 11. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, let's get a little bit more yarn here, 10, and here is 11. And next we wanna do an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we're gonna take our crochet hook, and we're gonna go into the front loop of the next two stitches, so only in this front loop. So there's one front loop, and then we want to flip over and go into the second front loop right here. Okay, so the front loop of the next two stitches, two stitches in a row, front loop only, and you want to yarn over and basically do a single crochet into those front loops. We're going to pull under those two front loops, and then yarn over and pull through two. And that's an invisible decrease. It's going to decrease it down very subtly. It will be hard to notice where this is, which is really nice uh, for your end product. So 11 single crochets and an invisible decrease. And then we're gonna do two single crochets. One, two, and then another invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop. Do it one at a time. Try not to do both at the exact same time. Try to do one front loop and then get your crochet hook around and do the other front loop. And then we'll do a single crochet. And you really wanna kind of scoop with this single crochet to get it under those front loops. Pull through. And we'll do that one more time. Two single crochets, one and two. 
and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay. All right, and that's going to be the end of round nine. Now we're on to round 10. Round 10 is nice and easy, uh, or well, relatively. We're going to decrease down one more time. You should have 18 stitches around now, by the way. So you should have 18 stitches. Now for round 10, what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch. We're going to work around our stitch marker there. One single crochet, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. So we're going to go front loop and front loop like that. Yarn over, single crochet. Okay, we're going to repeat that process of a single crochet and then an invisible decrease six times total. So all the way around until you get to the end. Let's do it again. Single crochet into the next stitch right here. And then front loop, front loop, invisible decrease, and then single crochet into both of those. Okay, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, invisible decrease, so front loop, front loop, single crochet into that. There's our third, let's do our fourth repeat, one, and then decrease. Let's do our fifth, single crochet, front loop, and then front loop. There we go. And our last one, single crochet, and then front loop, front loop, invisible decrease into the last right there. Okay, so after round 10, now, now we're on to, um, we finish up the majority of our piece now. Now we can go ahead and start sewing on our different uh, body parts here. Um, and if you, well, we'll talk about that in a sec. Let's go ahead and sew on the wings onto the side of the body and, to, and the tail onto the back. So let's start with our wings. Get our little wings here. And our wing should have two ends. Let's get our head just a little bit away. We're going to go ahead and thread the middle end first. Put that on a needle. Like that. And we're going to go into the side of our body. Now, the placement, I kind of just know it now. Um, so I'll just kind of explain it. If you're following along on the burb head here, and you go down a few rounds, so there, there's the eye, and you go down one, two, three stitches. We want our wing to be right here, here, and here. Those are the three stitches you want to use into this kind of backwards L. One, two, and three. Okay, so if you're counting down from the eye, you want to count over, let's count over two stitches to the right, one, two, and then count down one, two. That's the top end. There's our bottom end. You'll see three in a row. One, two, three. Now the middle part, you want to put through the middle of the two, right there. That's the, that's the first part you're going to find, is the middle. And then, each wing is different. We're going to do this side first. If you follow that middle end, you'll see, go through the that little L again. We're going to go through the top of our L and then out through the bottom of our L here. Go ahead and pull that through. Then we're going to go around both loops of the other end of our wing right here. Okay, so around both of those, go back into that same exact stitch and just go ahead and pull on through. I'm going to pull it a little tighter. And we're going to come out where you went in. So we're going to come out through that top loop right here. And we're going to go through the other side, both loops on the other side of the last of our wing right here. We're going to go through that, both of those loops, and back through the same stitches coming out of right here, back into the body. We're going to pull it all nice and tight. And we can use these two ends to double knot on the inside. So there's one double knot. And there's the second of our double knot. We can cut it nice and close. And there we go. We have one of the wings sewn on. You can see, notice how the wing has a top and a bottom too. So if you look at the top of the wing, see all these little Vs here? This would be the bottom of the wing. It's kind of hard to tell because it's white, but there is 
a bit of a difference. There's the top and the bottom. So we want to make sure the top is facing up. So we got one wing here. Now we want the other wing on the other side. So what we want to do is first thread our middle of our second wing. And we want to calculate it so that it's on the same row. Okay, so to calculate all the way over. And we would want this other wing right at the end of the round here. Okay, so we want first part right there. And then here's our L. We go one, two, three. Boop, 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 boop. This is where we want the middle one. And then we can thread our wing. And then this other one, we want to go the opposite way around. Because remember how we went from the top to the bottom? Now we want to go from the bottom to the top because it's the opposite side of the wing. And we still want it to be sewn on top like that. So we want to go through this first one, come out through the second right here. Like that. Then we want to go through both loops of the first end right here. So just both of these loops. Go back into the body and come out through the other side of the L. Go ahead and pull that through. Let's go ahead and try to pull it a little tighter too right now. And then you want to go through both loops of the other side of the wing right here and back through the body. Just like that. Then we have both of our wings sewn on. See how it's kind of looks pretty good. And then we could just double knot that on the inside with our two ends here. One and two. And we cut the end nice and close, toss that to the side. Okay, so we got our wings sewn on. Next up, we want our tail sewn on to the back here. So grab our tail. And our tail sewn on pretty, like a very similar way. First, you wanna thread the middle right here. And the back tail is sewn on by going through this, wait, this loop right here, or this stitch right here. So that's gonna be in row if Let's see, which row is that? That is going to be into row um, 9. So into the top of row 9, see how we have our increases? Here's our one increase, here's our another increase. I'm going to go through the left side of that first, or that second increase right there. Okay? Just like directly on the back. So if you just try to make sure that it's lined up on the back, that's pretty much where you want to go. So there's going to be where our tail end is, our middle end of our tail is sewn on. And you can thread the other end of our tail. And you want to go one row, one round under where that middle is sewn on. And you want to go through this side of the stitch and then this side of the stitch. Okay, so we're just kind of going like that. Like that. And then just like our wings, you want to go through both loops of this side of the, the tail then back in through the same stitch and come out through where you first came in, like that. And then again with this side, both loops, back in and come back out through the bottom. Like so. Pull everything nice and tight. Pull this tail end nice and tight. And then we'll just double knot these two tail ends on the inside. One and two. And we'll cut it nice and close. Okay. And the last thing that we want to add before we finish up our whole burb is we want to add our little feet under our wings. So here's our feet. And our feet um, are kind of hard to tell, but there is definitely a top and a bottom to our feet. Most important, I think, was, is the top and the bottom of the feet. So if you look at our foot, this is the bottom of it, and this is the top. We're actually going to sew it upside down, so this we want this part looking up. It's kind of hard to tell the difference, but 
it just looks cleaner on the bottom. So I like to have the bottom looking pointing up. So what you want to do is you want to thread this on so it goes onto the foot like this. We're going to thread one end. And we want these just under the foot or under the wings right here. So they're kind of spread out a little bit. So you want to go through two stitches in the same row into the row just above this last one right here. So just into the to the top right here to around 10, I think. So you want to go through the top of this part. Pull that through. And you want to go one stitch over. Thread the other side of the foot. Go ahead and pull that through. And what's important is that you want to pull it tight enough so that both those knots get pulled through. So on the inside, see there's one knot. I'm going to pull tight enough so that there's the second knot. So see how we have this two knots just barely poking on through? And then you want to double knot it on the inside. So one and two. Cut the yarn nice and close. Throw that to the side. Okay. And then we want to do our second foot into the same row, just a few over so that it's lined up with the other wing like that. So we're going to thread both ends. First one side, thread that on a needle. We'll go through right here. And then thread our other end, go through one stitch over right here. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever on this. I'll be happy to help. We also have a Discord channel and a Facebook group, which you can find in the description of this video if you want extra help. And either I'll be there to help or someone else in the Discord channel or Facebook group will be there to help. I'm pretty often in it, though. Let's go ahead and double knot this on the inside, making sure that those knots are pulled through. I just went ahead and did it nice and quick. Cut that end. And then we can pull this tail end. Let's go ahead and pull our stitch marker out. Try to be a little bit more careful so we don't accidentally mess up a bunch of stitches. There we go. Toss that to the side too. Okay, so we got our bird pretty much done. I like to take my feet like this and make sure they're tweaked out and then pinch them in like that so they're kind of like pointed a little bit. And now if you want to turn your burb into a finger puppet version where you can kind of add an egg or something and you spit it right out like that, um, uh, you want to use a the finger puppet method. And I'll go ahead and put a link in the description right here. It's also in the written version of the pattern to where you can go straight to that um, pattern. But it basically you're going to be making a finger puppet that you can sew onto the bottom. And then uh, that is how you make it so you can add an egg and stuff in there. It's kind of cool. I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, but you can't add a magnet and a finger puppet, unfortunately. So what we're going to do in this video is instead, we're going to be adding our little magnets. So here's what we want to do for that. Instead, we want to decrease down one more time. Now, before I go and decrease, um, let's go ahead and stuff our guy just a little bit. I want to get a little bit of stuffing. You really want to make sure that this stuffing gets above those eyes. That's really important. See the eyes on the inside there? You really want to get that stuffing above the eyes. Just a little, just a little bit of it. Or else the head gets kind of deflated. There we go. That's pretty good. And then we'll stuff it more in just a second once I get um, our last round done. Okay. So for our final round on our burb, we want to decrease into each stitch all the way around. That's going to be six decreases total. Now for a decrease, I don't mean an invisible decrease like we were doing on the previous round. I mean a sharp decrease, which is um, something a little bit uh, more unique to my patterns. I use a thing called a sharp decrease. It's basically a slip stitch two together. So what we want to do is we want to go into the next stitch under both loops, like we were going to do a single crochet and yarn over and pull through. 
Then you want to go into the next next stitch right here, pull a second loop under that loop, and pull that second loop through the two loops on the hook like this, and just pull it through. Boop. And that's going to sharply decrease it down really tightly to make it a really small um, opening at the bottom so that you can sew it closed really easy. So there's our first decrease. We want to do six of those. Let's do another one. Into the next stitch like you're doing a single crochet, and then to the next next stitch, pull a second loop through, pull that second through the two loops on the hook. Okay, so there's two. There's three. As you get closer, it's easier to pinch it like this than get your finger in there. There's four. And that last part, you really want to do a scoop. Let me show you again in this fifth one. There's one. There's going to be five. I'm going to take that second one and you really want to scoop it in. It makes it a lot easier. And this is going to be our last one. There's six. Scoop it up. And then we can cut our yarn like that. Just pull it all the way through. You want a little bit of an end just to sew it closed. And before I finish, first we want to stuff it up a little bit. I'm going to be using some of our thread here to stuff it um, just because it makes it a little bit... I, I, I like to just not have too much waste if I can. So we're going to use our little ends that we didn't that we cut off, and we're just going to kind of try stuffing that off him first. I should say her, because it, it is a chicken, not a rooster. I guess I could do a rooster. I wonder what the difference of a rooster and a chicken would look like in crochet form. <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. So you really want to make sure all that stuffing's in there. I find that using your excess yarn is a little bit more dense, too. kind of keeps their, your weight down a little bit. Make sure you get it, all the little crevices there. And let's see, do we need any more stuffing? Let's just do a little bit of extra stuffing, just a tiny bit to fill in all the cracks that we didn't get with our yarn. That's a good idea. And before we sew it closed, I'm going to be adding our magnets. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that right on the inside there. And then we'll sew it closed. Now to sew it closed, I've been using this more noon method for myself. I thread the end of our needle with the end, and I just go through the front loops of all the loops around and then pull it tight. So, so we'll just go through this front loop right here. We're just gonna go into all the front loops. There's one, just keep going around. Oopsies, almost went into the tail there, or into the leg. Because when we pull it tight, it just pulls it really closed tight and you can't really even see that it's what we're doing. Okay, all the front loops. Then you just go ahead and pull it nice and tight. We'll go back down through the middle and just come out somewhere on the back. It shouldn't come apart, but if you're worried about it, you can come back down through the middle to create a secondary knot. Okay, let's try this again. Middle, come out through the side here and just pull it, make sure it's tight. And there we go. Go ahead and cut the end here like that. And um, oh, I also like to add a little bit of stuffing into the head of our burr, uh, of, our, of our mask. It just kind of keeps the head like inflated and doesn't, just makes it look more nice when you put it on. Give them a little bit of brains too. <laughs> All right, make sure we got that little tuft at the top and just pop it on. To pop it on the head, I like to go under the beak like that and then kind of push it over the side and then twist it on. And it gets easier and easier to add this head as time goes on. And there we go. We have a little chicken burb ready to spy on our farm. Who knows what they're spying for, but it's spying on something. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you like it, make sure to like it down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out more of my burbs by going to clubcrochet.com slash burb. Here we got a little owl that's coming out very soon. We've got our, whoop, we got our pigeon. Here's our cardinal. I still need to work on that pattern too. I, will, I really want to come out with the cardinal last month, but I just didn't have the time. Here's the duck. I love the duck. Oh, he looks like Perry the platypus a little bit. I love him. Hummingbird. 
one of my favorites. Turkey. Where's the eagle? Here's the eagle. He lost his head. Give him his head back. There's the eagle. Go and put these guys out. And again, thank you so much for watching. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. And uh, yeah, bye. Bye.